Commissioner's Week continues here on Midwest Sportsnet, and it is a privilege to get to visit with Jackie McWilliams from the CIAA, the conference commissioner who has been there since 2012. Commissioner, I'm going to ask you, just like I, I have uh, previous uh, guests here on the channel this week, to, to start with, how do you see your role as a commissioner? What do you, what do you see goes into that role? Yeah, I um, first of all, I can't even believe I've been here 12 seasons. So when I see commissioners that have been in their roles for 16 and 20 years and 22 years, I'm like in awe because it really goes fast. Um, but I have been truly grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this conference that I was a student athlete in um, and then to be able to come back and and see the growth of what was left when I got here and then to build upon that. Has, it's exciting. It's like you wake up every day and you know that there's a new opportunity to do some amazing work for the CIAA. You know, we're membership based. So I have to remind ourselves that this is not about us. It's really about serving the 13 schools in our conference and the student athletes that are part of this conference and the work that we get to do every single day to make sure that their experiences are great. Um, and we're in the business of championships and events. I mean, outside of the the structure and the organization and all those things that we're required to do. But what a pretty cool job to have your work day at a championship. You know, I just have to to pinch myself to be like, oh, this is my work day. I get to do social media and take pictures with student athletes. And I, I just feel blessed, Joy, that, um, you know, it's 12 seasons completed. Um, the work that we have done has been tremendous, media deals, um, apparel deals, all those things to keep this conference strong um, and to keep it interesting. Well, I listen, I remember when you were installed, and, and I, I we talked about it a little bit uh, prior to the recording here, but, but that's the truth because we share a family name, and it's something that caught my attention back in 2012. <laughs> and so I, I really have followed you through the years. And, you know, you mentioned 12 years there. That's it's it's not really tenure, but it kind of feels like that a little bit that that you have that uh, talk about being able to have that position then for those 12 years. You were you were saying something about a little bit earlier, but just the, the longevity now that goes into it. Yeah, I you know, it's um you know, when I got here, I didn't know if I was going to be able to even stay one year, two years. I mean, I really came into a conference that I would say needed some some structure and some love and to break down silos. Um, and that was challenging um, to be a part of an organization that I knew had so much potential. Um, we had shifts with board members. And when you're a commissioner of a conference, you know, I don't have any one board member left from when I started, um, which is kind of crazy. But most of us can all say that that are college commissioners. I mean, we uh, our conference commissioners, most of us will outlive some of our presidents at our institutions. Um, but I, I, I just think that leadership, you know, on the president's level is really important to why our longevity has been good. I keep a, a tracking list of all of our audits of where we were and, and now where we are. I keep a, a track of um, all the decisions that have been made, hard decisions um, that were going to be instrumental or detrimental to the conference. And I think everything that we've done working with the board and my amazing team that we've been strategically able to position ourselves and to influence our membership and board to move in a direction um, to get us in a better space. I mean, long term longevity, you know, when I say that I'm talking about financially, I came in into a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar deficit. Like, how does that happen for a division two conference um, and cut it in half that quick within nine months or six months? And part of it is just paying more attention to what is important. And for us, every decision that we've made, it's always been about the student athlete. When we've made cuts, even in COVID, we tried to make sure that their impact of experience, whether it was virtual or our connections with them, that wasn't impacted. So that's what's been pretty cool about this conference, that we really stay focused and true to the mission of who we are. So 12 years in, first couple of years are always tough. I always tell new commissioners, I don't even remember the first two years. It feels like a blur, maybe not even the third year. But once you get your feet on the ground and start building trust with the partners, internal and external, and they also see your competency of what you can do and what you're able to do. Um, the problem with that is they think you can continue to do more. And that gets hard too, Joey. I mean, 
I don't know what else more we can do at this point except sustain what we currently have. You, you mentioned uh, reducing the deficit and, and taking care of some of the financial things like that. And in 12 years, when you looked at, at where you were then and where you are right now, are there other milestones that, that stand out to you? Yeah, you know, the, our, I'm really excited about our upcoming priorities. I mean, I don't think that we have paid or given enough attention to some of our other sports. And with this new media rights deal, that we have with HBCU Go, that gives us an opportunity to give exposure to all of our team sports specifically, and then we'll work on our individual sports, but to give them that national platform every week um, while they're playing through HBCU Go, uh, the SIAC and SWAC are on that platform as well. So it feels like this you know, national platform where HBCUs can really be highlighted. And, and, you know, the station is owned by Byron Allen Group. And, you know, he's buying up all the stations. So it really gives us a chance to be in different markets. Um, And we had our media deals prior, but this one is a pretty healthy one that gives us an opportunity to give more money back to our institutions so that they, specifically to athletics. And so I'm excited about what we can do to give back to our schools to help their programs, but also give the exposure and help tell more stories. I mean, the storytelling is a big thing, particularly in HBCUs, um, to continue that legacy that we talk about um, and to highlight the leadership and to value the communities that we've been serving for over a hundred and our conference is a hundred and going on 113 years, um, we're the first HBCU conference. And so I don't ever want to lose, you know, that leverage of who we are as the first HBCU conference, some of the greatest athletes, professional coming out of here. And I don't think we tell that story enough. And so we'll be highlighting, you know, with football this week, we have a new um, site that we selected for our football championship in the next, in 2025. Um, and we'll be moving to Durham with that championship. And it's going to give us a chance to to grow that championship within this market with the other institutions that not may not be competing. Ben Wagner is our partner as well with our media rights. I mean, so we have a very healthy, healthy, healthy list of partners that have been sustaining, have been with us for a long time. Coca-Cola has been with us 56 years as a partner yeah. Um, that's pretty incredible. Food Lion, I think we just celebrated 30 years with them nationwide. It's like 17 years. So, I mean, and then we got new partners that just came on Home Depot, um, uh, which is pretty incredible. We've been trying to get them on board for a long time. So you have this sustainability of partnerships, I think, that really are helpful. They help support our scholarships that go back to our schools, but they also help with some of the experiential things that we're doing as well, like academy sports. I mean, those are unique partnerships that even help us with some of our community activation. And I'm just kind of blown away, Joy, by some of the things that we do that I know other conferences don't have the same access and opportunities like we do. That's a, that's a nice privilege. That 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 is great. Yeah, I, I know that you worked in the NCAA national office for a while prior to coming in as the conference commissioner. And I would ask, you know, was that a, was that a benefit to be able to work from the national perspective before coming to a, a regional, if you will, a regional or a conference per, uh, position? There, uh, what what does something like that look like, and and how do you take from one to the other? I I couldn't be more, um, I'm so humbled that I had the chance to work at the NCAA. Not everybody gets an opportunity to work in a national office. And, you know, you're like the, the granddaddy of college athletics. And when you get there, um, the people are amazing that you get to work with. I mean, the knowledge that you gain at that high level Um, You come in thinking you know something, but you really don't until you get your hands dirty there. The politics that take place, the strategies around Mm -hmm. serving the membership and the committee work. I had been on committees, you know, being on the outside, but to actually lead committees and them influencing us and me influencing them to make the right decisions for our sports. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, and from working, I had championships like fencing. 
I was telling my team the other day, you know, for me, I learned immediately that I didn't really have to know the sport, but I had to pay attention to what was important to the people who did know the sport and engaging with them to learn what the sport and the culture was about and to make sure that they had all the tools that they needed to have great championships. Once you recognize that, then again, you're like the championship event holder. You're holding a sport like rowing. I never rowed in my life. Um, and But appreciate the sport and the opportunity to work with my colleagues on a championship that is incredibly a beautiful championship to watch. And so the details and understanding the, the partners and the institutions and the athletes and the needs, I mean, that's what I learned from the NCAA, paying attention and being a servant leader to the folks that actually want to be a part of this great association. You know, my experience with women's basketball and men's basketball probably gave me a bigger view of the NCAA and some of the strategy around media and the marketing and the politics around that, although I did that with the other championships. At that level, it's it's a different ball game. Men's basketball is a different ball game. Um, I would love to to be. I don't want to work at the NCAA, but to to be there with Lynn with women's basketball and see the growth from where it is now, from when it was when I was there, um, and the, and trying to get it. I don't want to say on an equal playing field, but giving the resources and access to the women's game as I know the men's game already had. And so to be on both sides of those during my career, it definitely prepared me for this commissioner role. Honestly, I, I, um, you know, I was a little nervous about when I applied for this job, it was my dream job. Um, but again, until you get into the, into the position, you don't know what all comes with it. Um, but I knew the experiences that I gained in the media marketing, in community, in contracts. I mean, I was responsible for transportation, hotels, tickets, community activation in, in men's and women's basketball in different capacities. Um, and not so much game operations. Game operations, I can do it with my eyes closed. But I really had the external part in CIAA. And what we do as commissioners is a lot of external work um, with partnerships. So it worked hand in hand for me. I I couldn't be more grateful that I had that opportunity to prepare me for this job outside of coaching and some of the things that I did prior to the NCAA. But when I can put all of that together and sum it up to this position, I, I just feel totally blessed and thankful that God gave me the the tools and the seed, you know, that seeds that were planted to get me to this point. We're visiting now with Jackie McWilliams from the CIAA. Conference Commissioner Week continues here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please subscribe. Uh, I, you talked about football a little bit earlier. Let me let me bring something else in. You all are collaborating with the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, uh, the CIAA, the SIAC. The football champions are going to meet to play following the regular season. Now, this will start not in 24, but in 25 uh, as part of a partnership, and it's a, a bowl game, if you will, if you look at it from that perspective. Talk about what that means for the conference. Oh, it's great. I mean, the the fact that we've had, you know, connection with the NFL, you know, the MEAC and the SWAC had been working with them for some time, and they have pulled us in the fold in the last six or seven years as HBCU opportunities to give to our students for jobs and careers and um, all kinds of things that have been offered to us to work with the NFL. The Black College Hall of Fame is an extension um, and with the um, Football Hall of Fame to have this game every year. And the SIAC and CIAA have been invited the last few years, um, and a lot because the MEAC and the SWAC schedules haven't been conducive to play in that game, which we didn't care about that anyways. We were just like, give us a chance. And so when we were given the opportunity to help select or at least recommend teams from our conferences to play, uh, it made sense to, to Anthony and I, Commissioner Holman, to think about, could this be the zero-week game that our football team's champions could play in this game. So we had good dialogue with the Black College Hall of Fame leadership about this game in Canton, Ohio. And we all thought that it would be a great sustainable model to bring our champion teams from each of the 
seasons to play in that game. And so our board agreed to it. Anthony's board agreed to it. And so, again, if the teams are available to participate in that game, they'll be the priority for that Canton game. So it's exciting. I think this is the fourth or maybe fifth year CIAA has participated in it. I think there's a lot of growth opportunity. We have a lot of HBCUs that are represented in the um, the Hall of Fame up in Canton. There's a segment of that Hall of Fame that is just Black College Hall of Fame that is absolutely incredible. I heard they were doing some, some new work to that space. Um, but when I'm there, I'm just blown away, um, you know, just to even highlight Livingstone College and Johnson C. Smith, who were the first HBCU institutions to ever play a game um, from all of the in, you know, Black college football. Um, and to sustain that history and to be able to do that in this game between SI and CIAA, I think there's ways to continue to tell our stories from both conferences to continue the legacy of what's so important about our HBCU football and just being a part of NCAA Division II. Well, you know, in football, let's stay there just a little bit longer, too, because you, you've you made an adjustment to how the regular season even is played to get to those champions that, that we were talking about just, just a moment ago. Yeah. And divisional play is going to be stepping aside altogether, and so you're going to take the top two teams record wise so it's a bit of realignment uh, per se i mean not necessarily but it's yeah. a bit of realignment if you will to be able to determine a champion talk about what that means then f within the conference you know it's part of the strategy of growing football in our conference you know from you know moving our championship to a more central location to all of our schools to looking at the the seating one through 12 or yeah one through 12 um for participation like who's the top two teams we were doing the northern and southern division and please know there's been a lot of conversation around that for some time because we give northern and southern division trophies we highlight those northern and southern divisions so that's a shift not a lot of people like those kind of shifts and change but if we're going to grow football um and get unique opportunities like going to the black college hall of fame game you know we want to position ourselves um, even in the alignment with selections for, for football selections. We want to make sure that we are aligned in the best that way we can so that our schools are being considered for those opportunities. And, you know, there's going to, there's always a shift. It used to be the Southern Division was extremely strong and the Northern Division wasn't that strong. Now we're seeing the Northern Division, you know, pretty strong and the Southern Division is not as strong, but I just think it's going to push all the institutions to think about how they're going to grow their sport and where they're going to align themselves in this new seeding process. You talked about 12 football playing schools, 13 members, and, and you mentioned that a little bit earlier, seven public, six private schools. That seems to have a nice balance. How does that work from your perspective? It does. I think it does. I mean, you know, there's always rivalry between our schools, private, public, when it comes to funding, you know, and the support of what they get for college athletics. Um, but to have the variety and the diversity of our institutions from very small campuses to very large campuses like Winston-Salem and Fayetteville State, you know, or Bowie State, our bigger campuses, and then the intimacy of some of our smaller campuses like Shaw and St. Aug and Virginia Union, they all bring something unique and different to the conference. And the leadership does too, based on their priorities on their institutions, but their skill sets that they bring to the board to help us make great decisions. I have great colleagues and I like to even think that they're even my friends that really help support me as their commissioner um, and give me the autonomy to do the work um, that they need done uh, to move the conference. So it's, it's pretty cool to be able to have conversations with any of them, no matter how big or small their schools are. But also it's my job to understand the challenges that they have. And they're very different based on state based on the size and based on whether they're private or public institutions. So it is challenging to kind of watch what the differences of how funding and, and resources that each of them have, but collectively we try to make decisions that doesn't put any of them in a position that they can't be um, competitive in the CIAA. If you look at, at what you do, and I, I want to ask this one, this one, is a, a question again asked throughout, but I, I like it. 
for for you being a conference commissioner, is there something that that you do as a part of your job as a conference commissioner, or, or even as a part of your personal life that if someone looked from the outside and said, "Wow, I I can't imagine a conference commissioner doing something like that," what what part of your life would fall into that category? Oh gosh, uh, I would say that's a good question. Um, That's a really good question. I would say that they probably don't believe um, some of the political political things that I deal with day to day. I mean, I don't think that people give. We are we are risk management people. Mm-hmm. We put out fires. That's what we do. Yeah. We run championships, but at the end of the day, we are constantly problem solving constantly. And I don't think people real, they see championships and all of that, but I think they would be surprised of the amount of problem solving, solving and conflict management that I do as a leader in resolving between internal and external partners. Um, So no, you're not going to see me running championships. I'll be there and I'm big, I might be doing social media um, but you don't know that I might be on the phone very late with my board chair talking about an issue that's happening within the conference or going through a bid process and having to talk to a mayor or, you know, saying those things right there. I don't know if people really understand that it's so much bigger than what they see in this role. So I might be coasting today, but who knows what's going to happen tomorrow Hopefully nothing, but as we've closed out the year pretty good. But when season starts, you know, I think every college commissioner, you're anticipating what the next issue or problem is going to be with the hope that there isn't. But there's always something that we're dealing with internally. It's the emotional bandwidth that this job takes for me is a lot. It's a lot. You give a whole lot of energy. At least I do. Well, (laughs) And, and that's what I've heard too. I have, I have heard that as well. Well, let me, let me ask you this then as the 23, 24 athletic year is, is wrapping up 24, 25, just, uh, just a, a little bit away. Uh, give me a commercial then for student athletes or their families or for someone else who might be wanting to send their student athletes to play at the next level, play in college. Why should they come play for an institution in the CIAA? Give me a commercial for that. Oh, wow. You know, if you play in the CIAA, the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, you're guaranteed to have the best experience academically, athletically, and culturally. This is the place where the legacy lives. It's the first HBCU conference. This is the place where leadership rises, where we see student athletes who are not just professional, but they're doctors and they're commissioners. And this is a place where community impact happens. We have just calculated that we have given about 75,000 pairs of shoes to to, to people in need as partnership with Samaritan's Feet. And that's just one of the many things that you do. So you will come to the CIAA and be well-rounded and you will leave the CIAA better than you left it. I like that. That is fantastic. Well, (laughs) Commissioner Jackie McWilliams, thank you so much for taking time with us today here. I have no doubt. uh, And by the way, I'm, I am, I'm cheering for you. I have no doubt that there's a family connection in there somewhere. So uh, I will, I will continue to support and cheer you on, but uh, success to the CIAA. And thank you for being a part of Commissioner's Week here on Midwest Sportsnet. Oh, thank you, Joey. Joey, just think of this. You're J-Mac and I'm J-Mac too. That's that's right. You, you, hey, listen, (laughs) I, I, I will, t- uh, full disclosure, my wife is Jody. All five of my kids start with Jay. You, you will, yeah, I mean, it's, it's no doubt you'll, you'll work where, work well. Come see me in Oklahoma. You'll fit. I right. love it. I love <laughs> it. Let's just say we're cousins. We're That's distant right. cousins somewhere. <laughs> Thank That's you so much. Right. I appreciate it. <laughs>